Yo, 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 what's going on, guys? Welcome to another edition of Pantherology. All you Pantherologists and Panther Nation, thank you for the support. I just want to give you a shout out for that. But go ahead and continue smashing that like button, smashing that subscribe button, and, and leaving a comment down below at the end of the videos. So, without further ado, let's dive in right into it. The Panthers, once again, are starting to see a season off 0-1. A loss at home with the team's best corner suffering an ankle injury in front of the stadium of empty Carolina blue seats. But throughout the season, the Panthers are going to be worth watching for from for far more than the final outcome or a couple of statistical notes. This is a building team for the future, and I think everybody needs to understand that. And I think throughout 2020, we are going to get better. And we're going to get a better sense of what that future looks like. The loss to the Raiders was an up and down and fair that included the Panthers almost pulling off a dramatic come from behind win. So what did we learn from this past Sunday's loss to the Raiders? Well, the fact is, is that the Panthers have had a lot of growing to do, and they still do. And that defense will likely continue to be that area that will continue to develop for some time. But I think there's some other areas that stood out to me that I'd like to share with you. So Panthers, as we know, fought their way back into this game. The third quarter was very ugly for the Panthers. They had zero points and 10 were given up. The two drives that occurred slowly during the quarter were both three and outs. After not having any penalties throughout the first half, they had four for 47 yards, including a taunting penalty course by DJ Moore, which that pissed me off. I was like, why? What was the point of that? And it was over an incomplete pass when LaMarcus Joyner's helmet, after he poked LaMarcus Joyner's helmet, after the defensive back had some choice of words with each other, which was stupid. But that penalty took place with nine seconds remaining in the corner, and the Panthers went on to score at the end of the drive on a three-yard touchdown by Christian McCaffrey. The third quarter had, could have taken everything out of the Panthers to whether they counted the game as over and started moving on to next week at Tampa Bay. Instead, the Panthers fought back from a 12-point deficit, and they reclaimed the lead. That's what you want to see from your young team. With no fans in the stands, especially one that lacked energy in a scrimmage just a week ago, not only did the offense put together a back-to-back -back scoring drives, but the young defense came up with a key stop on the drive in between. It says a lot about a team that are able to come back in a game when things get rough. Uh, here's some quotes from Matt Rule. To battle back from some early big plays to fight, scratch, claw, to take the lead back at the end of the game, I was proud of the guys. We were just a play away. And we were. And I was proud of the team. Um, and he, Rule said that after the game. Uh, more quotes from Rule. We said as a team we would get to the fourth quarter and we thought we would have a chance to win in the fourth quarter. And we did. I told them we were all disappointed. We are all hurting right now, but we need to play some games and find out more about our team and find out how we can improve. So we will improve and we will continue to get better. And I think he's absolutely right. We can't just base off this team off of one game. Now, was were there some coaching th things that I think that could have been improved on by running the ball on third and four and fourth and inches with Christian McCaffrey? Yes, that should have happened. And that's the coaching staff fault. That's Joe Brady or Matt Rule's fault. Well, whoever made that decision. The ball should have been a lot more in, in Christian McCaffrey's hands. Now, granted, I know we're trying to, I feel like, get the ball away from him so there's not so much pressure on him because we want to keep him there for a long time. But I understand when it comes down to the that end of the game, we really need to use him because he's our star. One takeaway from from a coaching perspective at the end of the game, the Panthers, like I said, allowed far too much time to bleed off the clock on that final drive. They got the ball on their 30, own 30-yard 30 line with over four minutes remaining and went slowly with just three plays before the two-minute warning. 
even if they had converted the final Alex Arma run, they would have been less than a minute and 20 minute remaining with two timeouts and that half of the field to go to score a touchdown. So that that ending was just not good coaching, not good play calling. Jeremy Chen with a nice it had a nice debut. Uh, the Panthers started their three rookies on defense. Cornerback Troy Pride with um, missed a couple of plays. And then defensive end Yadar Gross Matos was not very effective when he was, uh, when he was on the field. Yadar Gross Matos only finished with one tackle. And he only played 25% of the defensive snaps with St- Stephen Weatherly starting despite a hamstring injury. Um, defensive tackle and first round pick Derek Brown had a fine game in my opinion he finished with three tackles um the team's only tackle for a loss and a pat and a pass deflected but the panthers struggled to create pressure especially on the interior part of the line um especially when the raiders were losing multiple offensive linemen to injury the panthers did not have a single sack in that game for the first time since week two of 2018 they didn't aid a panther secondary that was without cornerback Dante Johnson Jackson uh, for most of the game. Uh, more quotes from Rule. I think there were a bunch of plays where he was a step away from making a bigger play. Those guys will get better and better and better. I thought our tackling at times, a lot of reaching, a lot of grabbing. We could take just a couple more steps and make those tackles and make them even better. Uh, Rule said also... I hope and expect we will have some radical jumps on defense as we tackle better. Derek is a talented player and it looked like he was pretty productive. And I thought he was. He looked he looked great. Um, but it was the linebacker slash safety Jeremy Chin for me who stood out among all the rookies. Because he had a solid game starting out at outside linebacker. And then he finished with eight tackles. Second most on the team. Second most by a Panthers uh, rookies uh, ever in week one. Chen is going to be a player that is all over the field throughout the season. And showed up with well in his first professional game. He lived up to the expectations set by his performance in camp. Defensive coordinator Phil Snow said previously that he thought everyone would enjoy watching Chen play, and it checks out so far. Well, where I'm concerned is, is with Pride Jr. Um, His development is what we'll have to be watching for. He's getting thrown into the fire very early, then expected, uh, and then Eli Apple, because of Eli Apple being on the IR, How he looks week 16 will be far more telling of his future than Sunday's loss to the Raiders. Quotes from Pride Jr. If I just do small things that would have helped at the beginning of the route, it would have provided a different outcome. That was a learning experience. And that's what Pride Jr. said about the touchdown he gave up to Nelson Aguilar. Uh, More quotes from Pride. He goes, obviously it sucks to have have those in a game in a win or loss situation but that was good for me and building my confidence later because i know exactly what i need to do it's just about executing now so that i mean pride's right and i think we just got to give him some time so we'll see uh razul douglas whose first practice with the team was wednesday following when he was claimed off the waivers uh filled in well for jackson so a couple of notes here. Quarterback Teddy Bridgewater obviously had a solid first game. He didn't have any major mistakes, although he did take responsibility for one sack. He finished the game, though, 22 for 34. He had 270 yards and one touchdown. I mean, he had a very nice play with Robbie Anderson for a 75-yard strike. Was also the second leading rusher which he finished with four carries and 26 yards. I felt like he moved the offense up the field multiple times, and it showed that his communication with offensive coordinator Joe Brady was even better than I expected. Improving the third down efficiency will be a priority because he we were only 7 of 13 versus the Raiders. McCaffrey was only targeted four times as a receiver, which was a big surprise for me, but he had a total of 26 touches. Slightly above average than last year, he was on the field for all but two offensive snaps. 
he'll likely be more involved in the passing game going forward, hopefully, because we, like I said, we got to get the ball on our star, and he's our star. So I, I need to see more of that. Moore needs to play better. He only caught four of, of his nine targets, and he only had 54 yards, and of course he had that taunting penalty, and he had a couple of, of drops. So he'll need to step up for this offense to really flourish. Like we've got, he's got to catch these passes. The Panthers uh, have ha have a solid returner in my opinion. After struggling to find someone who was very consistent in the return game last year, uh, we signed Farrell Cooper uh, this offseason. While he didn't have a touchdown or do anything wild, he was consistently improving the team's field position. He gained an average of 27.3 yards on the kickoff and 14.5 on the punts. Like I said, smash that like button, smash the subscribe button, uh, leave a comment down below, let me know what you think, give me your feels on this loss this past Sunday. Guys, we're going to get better, just keep watching, it's it's going to take time with the, with the whole new coaching staff, new quarterback, so just give it some time, let these rookies develop, and then hopefully everything will come together. Um, I'm hoping before week 16, I'm hoping by... Week six, week seven, maybe week eight would be nice. Um, I hope we can get some even wins before that too. But guys, you know what to do as always. Keep your heads up and keep pounding.